Ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So I'll talk about AOP and a little bit I'll talk about how AOP and ICAP and Pakistan have to collaborate. Accounting and Auditing Organization for Islamic Financial Institution. This is something that uh, was a dream in 1987 and 1991 and uh, what the objective was uh, it was to set up the standards for Islamic finance. Now, when we talk about standardization, what is the need for standardization and how it benefits the economies and how it benefits the, the industry? This is something that is itself needs some time to discuss upon. But this, the most important part is that standardization actually provides the maximum benefits to the stakeholders at large. I don't think that uh, today is the right time for discussing it. And I was uh, uh, like, you know, because the time is limited. So I'll just touch upon some of the most important benefits of standardization that uh, are achieved uh, by the industries and stakeholders at large. Some of the most important aspects that I would like to touch upon are that the, the standardization actually improves efficiency, it reduces cost, it reduces duplications of effort, it provides you better human resources, it provides you human resources across the globe which are, which are, uh, which are able to work in different parts of the world in the same manner. And this is something that actually helps the countries to attract investment in the long run, because when you work according to the appropriate sets of standards and the global stakeholders have a confidence level at you that you are working according to the right standards and you are working according to the right approach and you have the right resources available and you are not going to waste uh, like, you know, waste time and effort on reinventing the wheel every time. So these are the things that actually provide you benefits for the stakeholders for the industry, but I would say even for the countries, you will see that there are countries that are actually focusing significantly on the standardization because they want to attract foreign investments and they want to, to provide more stable and sustainable business and uh, work opportunities within their countries, not only for their own people, but for outside. And from for countries like Pakistan, as I will like to touch upon this thing, actually that provides a greater opportunity for, for having, having human resources that can work globally. So this is something that I like to touch upon later as well. Uh, AOF in a nutshell, uh, we were formed in 1991. I'll quickly share, uh, share a very quick uh, time, time, time uh, series with you as well. Uh, we actually have three boards uh, in, a, in a nutshell, and we develop the standards in five areas, and we collaborate with other more important standard setting bodies on the Islamic side, as well as where possible on the conventional side as well, to come up uh, with the best possible standards for Islamic finance industry. Standard setting doesn't end when you actually uh, actually write a standard or issue it to the market rather it's very important and I remember uh, you all know Dr. Aishwat Hussain he was uh, recently in, in last term he was chairman of our governance board and he used to say something which I quote quite often that uh, uh, standard setting is not something that you can do in a boardroom this is something that has to be attached with the overall industry, how it is working at all stages. You need to take the necessary input. You need to take the interaction. Uh, you need to be interactive with the market during the development phase, as well as uh, preparation phase, as well as post implementation phase. So this is something very important that we try to do. And from that perspective, we work additionally on the journal awareness part. We generally we work on the market development part for the newer markets. We work on the uh, on the on the capacity development part, human capacity development part in particular. So these are the areas which we believe are integrated with the standard setting function. So we try to work on a, in an integrated manner on these areas. Similarly, I would like to talk about the sets of standards that we develop, and we believe that those sets of standards in five areas that we are working together, this is very important to understand the philosophy for that. 
the sharia is the core for islamic finance the islamic finance emanates from the need for sharia compliant financing so the sharia standards and the sharia principles and rules which apply on the products and services are primarily our our uh, i would say the centerpiece of our standards that is our sharia standards but that is not sufficient you can have the best rules available in the market but you if you don't have a good implementation mechanism for that how that can work and here comes our governance standards which provide a good governance mechanism and controls which are necessary to get these standards implemented then the third part comes with the accounting part because whatever is done needs to be recorded and reported in a manner which is consistent with the same principles of sharia you need to identify the right risk profiles you need to identify the right balances and the profits and losses that are attributable to different stakeholders and you need to provide at appropriate disclosures not only to the direct stakeholders but also to the indirect stakeholders and industry at large whoever and uh, stakeholders at large whoever confidence in you as a, as a as a sharia compliant institution and that for, for that purpose the accounting standards become necessary and then you need to have proper audit and sharia audit standards in order to make sure that these are reflected whatever is reflected in the financial statements and how the operations and services are done and how these governance standards and sharia standards are implemented this process is audited in an appropriate way so this is uh, the fourth part of it and i would say the last part but not the least is very important that sharia compliance is the form legal legal form but ethics and values and doing the things in the right way is actually the uh, it is actually the soul of it so we develop standards on the ethics part codes of ethics and other areas as well so sharia accounting audit governance and ethics these are the areas where we develop standards we don't develop standards in the areas related to solvency capital adequacy and other regulatory matters for which we collaborate with islamic financial standards board which is Uh, which is the other uh, important Islamic finance standard setting body, and uh, I, uh, it is a, it might be a good news for all of you that for in recent past we are working together with them as well, and recently we issued exposure draft of our first joint standard with them. So this is very important to understand that this all is a bouquet, and this is very important even from ICAP's perspective because uh, I'll touch upon this thing later on. That some uh, sometimes some of the regulators are more interested in Sharia standards, like in Pakistan, the Sharia standards of POP are adopted uh, by SBP and also by SCCP. Uh, they are in the process of adopting more standards, but partially they have already adopted. But at the accounting or and governance side. icap needs to play its role accounting auditing and governance side which i'll touch upon this thing later as well but this we need to understand that this is a very important thing aof uh, is a small organization in terms of secretariat but the functions are quite big we have three technical board sharia board accounting board governance board now recently we have formed a public interest monitoring consultative committee as well which is in line with the global best practices of uh, of a standard setting we have our own uh, the board of trustees and under the board of trustees we have our own governance system have, having multiple committees etc 1990 uh, 1991 was the time when there was an mou but before that i would like to touch upon that in 1987 the process started when islamic development banks training wing IRTI is the Islamic Research and Training Institute actually developed a study which identified the need for it and then it's all history that in 1991 there was a MOU signed to form AOP and then since 1992 it started functioning we are so much thankful to the to the kingdom of bahrain and central bank of bahrain being our host and uh, leading the way by adopting our standards and providing the opportunity not only to aof but also to other islamic finance infrastructure bodies the way they have worked on this and uh, we, have, we we are so much thankful to them and we are thankful to even uh, uh, other institutions that are working in in bahrain particularly bibf a lot of areas we are collaborating with them as well 
the history goes back to that time, but if you see, it is an evolution process. We started with the accounting standards and accounting statements, then we came up with the auditing and governance standards, and later we decided to establish a separate Sharia board. Sub Sharia board was always there, the Sharia committee was always there, but that was actually assisting the accounting and auditing standard setting, but later we started developing in 2000. And then two, we started developing our own Sharia standards as well, which are now, I would say, if I, even if I say these are the Bible of Islamic finance, and I would like to refer a quotation by one of our uh, accounting standard board chairman. He says that even in the countries where you don't feel AOF is, uh, you don't see AOF standards are legally adopted, you will still smell AOF, which means that the countries where it is not even legally adopted, you will find that the AOP Sharia standards, accounting standards, governance standards, these are referred to even on a voluntary basis. And there are a lot of countries, even non-Muslim countries, where institutions have voluntarily adopted our standards as well. This is a quick look at uh, our founding members. We have six founding members and the large uh, member base. The total members are nearly 250, I would say, but not all, not all of them are active. Some of them are not active anymore, or some of them were merged with each other. But we have a very large uh, base of members coming from 35 plus countries. Uh, these are just selected names of our regulatory members, our our uh, our institutional members, and these are the institutions with which only the selected institutions with which we have our uh, our MOUs and uh, working collaborations. A very quick uh, summary of uh, this uh, a very important uh, in information that is uh, AOP's footprint as to how and to what extent uh, AOP standards are adopted in different parts of the world. You will see that uh, there, are, there are 19 countries that are regulatory jurisdictions in uh, 16 countries. Uh, that adopt our Sharia standards fully, and we are so uh, so much uh, you know uh, so much proud to announce that Alhamdulillah last year uh, Bahrain decided to make them part of law. So in Kingdom of Bahrain, our Sharia standards are now part of law. Not only are adopted as a regulation, but are part of law, and we are looking forward towards more countries to go in the same direction. Uh, if you see, uh, there are 24 regulators in 18 countries that adopt our accounting standards fully. That is the full adoption. And 18 regulators in 15 countries adopt our governance standards fully. Then there are different, uh, different levels, like you know, some countries adopt them partially, some countries adopt them as a guideline. So the, in, 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 in terms of total, nearly 45 regulators in 36 countries adopt our at least one set of standards, either fully or partially or as guidelines. So this is uh, uh, this is the biggest achievement. This is the inventory as a standard setting body that what we have. Pakistan is as, as of now appearing in partial and as guidelines. We would love to see it as a full adoption. And I would like to refer one very important thing here, as you as uh, you mentioned, sir, that about the uh, federal Sharia court judgment. You, I would like to say that AOF contributed greatly towards that judgment because the judgment refers to AOF standards as a, as, a, as a means of possibility of implementation Islamic finance in full. They say that now with the availability of these standards and with partial adoption of these standards already in Pakistan, it provides a much better opportunity to convert it fully. And I'm, we are so thankful to Honorable, Honorable uh, Court on that. that uh, but we, we believe that as AOF, you know, I am a Pakistani and uh, I belong to ICAP, but even otherwise, we are available for all over the world. But for Pakistan in particular, we would say that we are available. We'll try to make all efforts for that. These are our standards available in multiple languages, including our Sharia standards are available in Urdu language as well. We are thankful to Pakistan's Banks Association as well, Islamic Banks Committee, as well as the Central Bank for that. Uh, we have our own certified uh, certification programs and fellowship programs. We have around 2,390 fellows who have passed our programs, either CSA or Certified Islamic Professional Accountant program from 38 countries. And again, there is a large number from Pakistan, but there is again one of the things that we and ICAP need to be to collaborate more on development of Islamic finance accountants and Islamic finance auditors and Sharia auditors. 
uh, quickly on the awareness and uh, advocacy, we are doing a lot of things. We have we are having conferences. We perform public hearings as a part of standard setting process as well as awareness program as well. Uh, we conduct a lot of roundtables and workshops. A lot of things actually happen on a physical basis in Bahrain or in other parts of the world. And now most of the activities we are doing online as well with an opportunity to work together. Uh, we, 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 uh, we, we have developed multiple reports. We are publishing our journal now for the last several years, Journal of Islamic Finance Accountancy, JOIPA, and issuing uh, newsletters from time to time. Now coming, I'll, I'll take just a few more minutes, and uh, particularly on this very important aspect, the vision of Haidi Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah at the time of inauguration of the State Bank of Pakistan, which was his last public speech. And here it is just a quotation, but I would like to touch upon one very important point. And he says that we must work out our destiny in our own way and present to the world an economic system based on the true Islamic concept of equality of manhood and social justice. This is something that we need to, we are forgetting this thing as a vision of the founding father of the country and we need to we re-emphasize on this thing and the federal Sharia court judgment is a very important step in that direction. Again, the judgment is in, in line with the Constitution, Article 38F, where it is. it says that the state shall abolish riba. And uh, when I read the judgment, I felt I'm proud to be a Pakistani after seeing that judgment and this thing. And this is something that is, you know, you don't find everywhere. And I'm so proud on this. And I hope that we need to, be, we are able to work together on these areas. There are some quick facts, uh, Mr. Tola and others have already identified Pakistan Islamic banking uh, with the support of central bank and government as of now is nearly 20% already. The Kaful is at 12% already. Mutual fund, I don't have the picture, but actually mutual funds are more than 30% now roughly and, uh, and pension funds are more than 60% already starting. So the data, Alhamdulillah, is already quite positive without a formal plan for conversion. Inshallah, we hope that when this formal plan for conversion comes, then we, we are so much uh, positive about it, seeing the task force being formed by the federal government. We hope that the things will be moving in the right direction. Uh, the data uh, for Pakistan is particularly very positive, alhamdulillah. If we can see, uh, there are some stunts and opportunities I would like to skip, up, uh, skip, but just one thing I would like to mention, and this I mention every time we have a common uh, event with SBP or ICAP. I say that Pakistan is taking too much from AOP. Uh, AOP is taking too much from Pakistan and Pakistan is not taking enough. I Means Pakistan is not still adopting all of the standards. But if you see, uh, I just want to say that Alhamdulillah, Pakistan's human resource in the banking sector, in the financial sector, but particularly in the Islamic finance sector is probably the best. You will find the best human resources sitting in all the important organizations related to Islamic finance around the globe. Our boards, if you see, even our board of trustees have two, two, uh, two, uh, two chartered accountants and one more member of the uh, uh, member representing Pakistan. Our Sharia board has our chairman, his eminence, Sheikh Taki Usmani, who is uh, from Pakistan. Uh, the AOP Accounting Board has three members who are chartered accountants, one from ICAP, but two were nominated by the, the big four firms from within the region, not from Pakistan. So it was not that we went uh, to Pakistan and we picked so many people. No, they were nominated by Ernst and Young, by Deloitte, by Central Bank of uh, Central Bank of Oman, Central Bank of uh, Bahrain. These are the uh, these are the organizations that appointed Pakistani chartered accountants and other Pakistani experts because. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, we are providing globally some of the best human resources. And once again, I would like to emphasize that this is an area on which ICAP needs to build upon to develop more and more top quality human resources for Islamic finance and for which we can have more collaboration programs. Uh, our Public Interest Monitoring Committee has two representatives. Our Governance Board has five, actually, Pakistani or Pakistani origin people. And again, only one of them is taken as a representative of Pakistan. All others are representative of other organizations, alhamdulillah. On the way forward, very quickly, we suggest signing an MOU between AOP and, I, AOP and ICAP for working together towards development of Islamic finance industry and adoption of standards. 
we need to work on development of standards alhamdulillah icap is already helping us in lot of areas related to development of standards and we can work more on that on that option side we need to work together uh, towards uh, human uh, human capital development lot of work can be done our programs can be offered uh, jointly by op and I, 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 icap to for, for development of top quality resources uh, there are more areas we are already working on some of the public hearings and other events together with icap and spt pakistan and we hope that these are the areas where we can build upon further with that we are open to support whatever support is needed by icap and by uh, the regulatory authorities in pakistan for development of islamic finance industry i would like to thank you all for giving me this opportunity and listening to me patiently thank you very much assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh